So coconut oil is really a very good medium chain triglyceride that really helps with, with fat. Um, so we want to reduce, the, we want to have a, a role in the inflammatory process and decrease markers of inflammation. And so omega-3 fatty acids are in the fish, mackerel, sardines, uh, albacore tuna, wild salmon, and halibut are really high in these omega-3 fatty acids. And then we have alpha linoleic <coughs> acids, which are in nuts. Walnuts, organic canola oil, flaxseed, olive, chia. Chia is an amazing, amazing grain. Chia gives you fiber, and it also gives you a fat, fatty acids. And I grind it in a coffee grinder in the mornings together with black seeds. And then I put it in a little container, or like lasts for three, four days, and I put it in a smoothie in the morning. And the chia seeds, is, they're really, really good for you. Um, and those will all reduce inflammation. And there's been a lot of studies on that as well. Take out the next one. So these are the medium chain triglycerides that are found in coconut oil. And the long chain fatty acids and the omega-6 fa omega fatty acid that we get from meat and from most dairy goes through the lacteals in the small intestine. The lacteals are actually lymphatic vessels and they go through there. And if you have a strain on your lymphatic system, that can be too much. When you have medium chain triglycerides, unlike the long chain the triglycerides, they actually do not put a strain on the lymphatic system because it goes straight to the liver. Um, and cold pressed coconut and propylic acid is good. There's, a, there's a, a, a supplement called CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid. And the athletes actually use it to increase lean body mass and reduce fat. So I have my patients use that. So this is what you should be eating. And this is the new pyramid that's better than the old pyramid that we had. Um, doesn't that look delicious, right? And it's simple, you know, I, I cook every night, we very rarely go out, but it's simple. And I teach all my patients to cook at home, I help with recipes, I send things, encourage them, because the best thing to do is to eat at home, really. That's the most, the healthiest food that you can get. And when you do go to restaurants, choose where you're going. Um, the Mediterranean diet could be a really, really good diet for lipidema patients, and that's a very, very easy diet to follow because it's fruit and vegetables, nuts, olive oil, beans, legumes, and whole grains. It's moderate in alcohol and lean red meat and eliminates processed meat, refined carbohydrates, and whole fat dairy products. So that's the Mediterranean diet. Then we have the paleo diet which I know that a lot of people are really enjoying right now. And the concept behind that is to go back to the ancestral diet where our forefathers went and they hunted and they had meat. The meat that they killed, the animals they killed were lean because they, there were no hormones, no steroids, and they ran. So it was lean meat and they didn't eat it every single day because they just ate until their animal, whatever it was, was finished. But the paleo diet, is lean protein, fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, again, from your avocado, nuts, fish oil, and grass-fed meat. So when you have grass-fed meat, then you have a high um, conjugated linoleic acids, high um, short-chain fatty acids, which lowers, it, it's not inflammatory. It doesn't have the arachidonic acid that causes the inflammation. And you should have to supplement with vitamin D, and we're finding any way that lipidemia patients really should supplement with vitamin D. Um, and so on the paleo diet, and I think everybody should follow this, no fast food, no packaged foods, no dairy, no grains, no candy, no refined processed foods. Now, I'm just saying no, 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 but I help my patients, yes, 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 yes. So if you just replace and there's always something else that you can eat. I love my food and I love cooking. It doesn't mean we can't eat. So um, this is an example of what you could do. Uh, serving of fruit and free range eggs. I love to put um, turmeric in my eggs because it's anti-inflammatory with the curcumin. And I put cilantro in and tomatoes and I scramble the egg or do an omelet. Um, you can have a large vegetable salad at lunch and dinner with two servings of vegetables and choose from salmon, mackerel, sardines, free-range chickens, uh, grass-fed beef. You can choose between all of those and really have wonderful meals. 
Um, and then the spices that are anti-inflammatory that you can add to your cooking are ginger, turmeric, uh, rosemary, oregano, cayenne. Actually, if you like um, Indian food, those are all. Oh, that's wonderful. I love. Who likes Indian food? <laughs> it's yummy. So thank you, Karen, for doing that. Um, beans and lentils. I studied with a man called Dr. Bernard Jensen in the early 80s. He was a very famous naturopath and he was my inspiration. And he used to always say, eat a rainbow salad every day because all the minerals that come from the earth make different colors you know, in the food. Now we're finding that there are different active ingredients in foods that do affect us. So eat a rainbow salad every day. And all these, we, we've spoken about all these in other slides, so we, we can go on. Um, eat dig easily digested food, lean proteins, and low glycemic foods. The glycemic index of, a, of a, an ingredient of a food is the way it comes into the body and makes sugar in the body. So potato has a glycemic index of about 80 or 90. Sweet potatoes are actually lower. But the higher in the glycemic index, the more inflammation there's going to be. So you want to eat low glycemic foods, and even with the fruits, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, those are lower glycemic fruits. Doesn't mean you can never eat the others, but... And make every calorie count, and all your nutrients count, and eat your food to enjoy it, and know that it's actually helping you. So, we lost the screen. Um, this is... Um, Dr. Andrew Weil is a wonderful physician, and he actually started a whole um, program for physicians to train in integrative medicine. And if you go to his website, it's Dr. Weil, W-E-I-L, when they get it back on the screen, you'll see he has an anti-inflammatory pyramid, which is very different from the FDA pyramid. And when you go onto that and you click onto all the different icons, it'll tell you all about the foods, and you'll be able to see a lot about that food. So I do recommend that. Um, again, I spoke to you about quenching inflammation and taking foods that will actually quench uh, inflammation. I do have a slide to show you, but we'll see if we can get back on. It doesn't matter. We, we can go on. Shall we just go on? No. Yeah, it's, uh, that's fine. We can, we can just go on. I've seen most, most of the pictures, like, and I'm almost finished now. So. But I need to just go on. Can I, can I go on? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. So, herbs and supplements. Selenium has been found to decrease edema in the tissues and increase um, the efficacy of physical therapy when you're having lymphatic lymph treatments. Um, and it also reduces, in, helps to reduce infections and helps patients, don't worry, no, okay. Patients with chronic lymphedema and helps with free radical production. So that is uh, selenium. Um, bioflavonoids are found in a lot of fruits and vegetables and the bioflavonoids can be very, very helpful as well to help with inflammation. Anyway, so those bioflavonoids are horse chestnut, quercetin, um, which is a, a bioflavonoid, grapeseed extract, and pignogenol. Um, we have some others. We have um, NAC, which is n cysteine, which is, helps with the liver. Um, and there's butcher broom. Dr. Herbst has studies on butcher broom and how the butcher broom actually helps the lymph pump. Um, again, bioflavonoids and the horse chestnut can actually strengthen the blood vessels because with lipidema there's often problems with the vascular system and so the horse chestnut can help with that. Um, you want to give liver support? Oh, came back on. Okay. Uh, liver support and turmeric, I already spoke to you about that. Adrenal support, sometimes there's a lot of stress and you're really tired and you can use um, something called rhodiola rosa to help with adrenal support. It really is magical. I mean, within two days, you start to feel your energy coming back. And then I like to use, oh, it's really back. 
Okay. <laughs> systemic enzymes like Wovenzyme or Vitalzyme. And those system, when you take enzymes for digestion, that helps to digest your food. But when you take systemic enzymes, you're taking them in between food, and what it does, it helps to break down any fibrotic tissue and helps to reduce inflammation. But it has to be taken outside of food. Um, there's also something called seractotase, which is from the silkworm, and that also helps to, to break down, um, helps with, with um, inflammation. So now we just go to the mind-body connection, and I'm actually a clinical aromatherapist as well, and so I work with aromatherapy with my patients who are stressed and anxious, and some of them help to help with the flow of lymph as well. And so we need to sometimes just yield to the present and not be fighting this illness and this disease all the time, and do some relaxation techniques, be it meditation or guided imagery, hypnotherapy, and laughter, and lots and lots of deep breathing. So we have to remember all of that. Um, Evidence-based medicine has found that there is a connection between the body and the mind. Um, there's a woman called Candace Perth, who's a neurophysicist, who wrote a book about that, and she established that it really what your thoughts are is what happens, and so you need to be very positive in your thoughts all the time so that you can help with your immunity, because positive thoughts actually help with immunity. We need to laugh, because that laughter will stimulate the cisterna chile that I spoke to you about and actually help with your lymph system. So I was actually at a workshop oh, several years ago. We all had to just laugh and laugh and laugh. It's very infectious. Everybody starts laughing after that. Um, and reduce stress and knowing how the body-mind connection is, is, is helps. Uh, the body and the mind are so connected. Um, and you can work with aromatherapy as well. It's a very powerful technique that helps it actually helps on a physical level. The oils can be antiviral, antibacterial, but they also really help on an emotional level. And then just very quickly about exercise for the lymphatic system. Um, deep breathing, yoga, Pilates. I started in Pilates about three years ago. Now, not all of you may be able to do that, but those of you who can, it is so amazing for the lymph pump. And my Pilates instructor has now identified three, three of her students who actually had lymph edema, and she sent them to me, she recognized their legs, you know, from mine, but it really, really helps with that lymph pump. And swimming. I have patients who swim, I have one patient in particular who lost 40 pounds in five months, and the nodules on her legs have reduced substantially, and she is uh, swimming five times a week, and she's following myfitnesspal.com. So she's not doing 100% anti-inflammatory, but she is doing it. And I've been doing lymph drainage on her twice a week. And it's unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. So it, it, can, it can be done, but she's just not giving up. She's not giving up, and that's the important thing. Um, tai Chi, hypnotherapy, guided imagery, rebounding is wonderful. Am I, am I going over time? Am I okay? I'm almost finished. Yes. Okay. Okay. So rebounding is wonderful for lymph circulation, and you can get rebounders with a, a handle that you hold onto, and it stimulates the lymphatic pump. Uh, whole body vibration. I learned from Dr. Herbst, and the research is there, and we need more, and it's just amazing. Um, I have a patient actually that works with Dr. Herbst who's actually not coming in to me anymore because she bought, I told her to get a whole body vibration and she's working with that and she's doing quite well, so it's wonderful. Um, and dry brushing is also really good. I teach my patients how to dry brush in the direction of lymph flow to stimulate the lymphatics. And so living with lymphedema, lipedema, you want continued support from your therapist, from your physician, from your friends, from, your, from everybody here, um, and learn from the experiences of others, but tune into your own body always, and actively learn and problem solve, and work out a routine that works for you, and know that you can't go from point A all the way up there. I've been working on this for 25 years, but you can start, and you make small, small st start, and small progress, and you will get there. And your emotions can fluctuate, so you want to accept them all and find safe ways to express them and actively take care of yourself 
and find the positives about yourself and your actions in every situation and take pride in how you face a difficult challenge in the, in, or, and also in the ways that you care for yourself. And be proud of yourself that you're here and you're part of this group. That means you're taking a stand and you're taking a stand for yourself. And I'm going to end with a quote from one of my favorite authors, Michael Pollan. He wrote a book called The Omnivore's Dilemma and In Defense of Food and there are more. And he says, eat food. Isn't that a novel concept? Eat food. Mostly plants and don't eat, oh, not too much and mostly plants. And don't eat anything that your great-grandmother wouldn't eat. So make time every day for you. Meditate, walk, attend a support group, and do something daily that will make you feel restored. And you, this is a Celtic, a Celtic circle, and it gives me inspiration. So I thank you very, very much, and. Thank you.